Hello everyone and welcome back. This is example number two for reviving allies. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about creating a timer that will count down when you're within the radius that we've defined for a player uh, after they die, which is this little ring here that we have in the workshop. And when you're within that area and it counts down to zero, we'll resurrect that person, have an effect play, and we'll go have a big message pop up. And while it's counting down, we want to make sure we have a HUD text as well. So those are our goals today. Let me go ahead and write them out as rules because we will only have those three rules that we're adding. So we'll lower the timer when within circle. We will if timer, and we'll call it t equals zero, then revive the player. And we'll have the create HUD text when reviving someone. And it's that simple to think about something. When you have an objective, you can just break it down like that and you'll have these simple little objectives. Now, it will get way more convoluted as we get into this, but glad that we, uh, we have something to start with. So, to get into it, we had a previous video that where we defined these variables, went into all this. I'll have a link down in the description. If you haven't seen that, I recommend it so you can follow along a bit easier because uh, this will be very detailed. Uh, this one's much harder, that's why it's a separate video. Um, in this one, we're going to be reusing some of these conditions. So when we're counting down this circle, we're going to be making sure that we, the event player, are alive. We're going to make sure that our ally is dead. And we're going to make sure that the distance between us is equal to the global radius that we have set up. Now, we're also going to need a timer. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the global variable t equals to 4. And this is going to be the timer that we're going to use to start off with um, for everyone when they spawn in. And we'll set this uh, timer in this t equals zero section later on. But right now, let's focus on this and we'll make sure that this is ongoing for each player so that we can use the event player functions. We'll do that for each of these. And we'll close these down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set the player variable p. And this is defining our target. This is the person that we're closest to and who meets the conditions that we uh, just set for this rule. He's on our team. And what we're going to do is we're going to lower his timer down, his personal timer. So what we got to do is we got to modify his player variable. And it's going to be t for his timer. We'll subtract that by 1. So that's 1 second. And what we'll do is we'll play an effect each time this happens. So play effect. All players will be able to see it, and it's going to be a sound. It'll be an explosion sound. And the way sounds work is the color doesn't matter, uh, the position still matters, so make sure that you have the position to whatever you want it to be. I want it to be the person that's resurrecting them uh, gets to hear the sound the loudest. And we'll make sure that the radius is about 50, because the volume is actually the radius, rather than the radius being like how many meters away you have to be to hear it. So this is the volume. So we're going to have it at, have it at 50. We'll have a wait time of one second before it loops again and after that one second we'll have it restart when the conditions are met. Now if the conditions are not met then it will not restart and it will continue to the next action and the next action we want is to delete the HUD text which we will define the HUD text later. Until we do that let's have it loop if the conditions are true and it'll go between these two when we delete the HUD text. So we'll go into if the timer equals zero now we're going to create this condition where we check for each time a player's t equals or is less than the number zero. And it could go less than if multiple people were standing on the person's body, for example. So this will activate each time that the player's uh, zero or player's t equals zero or goes below it. So that means when the player first spawns and joins the game, it's not going to be a defined value. So that'll count as zero. And what we'll do then is we'll define it as the global variable. So we'll set the player's variable, their personal timer, to the global variable. So we'll say global variable, oops, global variable t. And now what we need to do is we need to actually resurrect the person. And we'll put the event player here. And what we'll do is we'll copy over some of these effects. And we're no longer using a variable for this person because this is a separate rule. This one happens for each individual person when their own t goes down. 
So we don't have a target for this person. This person is the target. So we're using them. So all people are going to see this effect that goes on. It's going to be the position of this person, which is the event player. And this big message will happen and it'll list the hero of the event player. Event player. There we go. Now we'll create the HUD text. And the way the HUD text is going to work is it's going to work the same way as this. So we're going to make sure that the player is alive. We're going to make sure that the, play, the, the player that they're resurrecting is dead. We're going to make sure that the distance between us and that person is within the appropriate distance. And one more thing is we're going to make sure that the player variable E is null. So that means that it hasn't been defined yet. Now the reason that we want it to be null is because we're going to create text and we don't want there to be multiple text. So we're going to make our text variable E and we don't want there to be multiple of them. But we want to define it. That way we can go ahead and delete it later on. So we're only going to let our player see it. So the event player. For the string, what we're going to do is we're going to do 1, 2, and 3. Oh, actually, what we'll do is uh, we'll do resurrecting is what we'll say. Now the reason I'm going to do it this way is because the header is a big box that will be right here in the center and we'll have it colored yellow. So it'll say resurrecting right here. Now what I want next to it is I want there to be a little icon to the side of it that has the heroes icon and I want it there to be a listing of the seconds. So to do that we'll have these two texts. So this is the subheader so it'll be like the top text and then right below it will be the regular text. So we'll have the hero icon be the hero of our target, which is the player variable P. Now the text that we're going to have is we're going to go ahead and have the seconds for that person. So the player variable of the player variable. But what we want to do is we want it to say how many seconds. So let's do string and then here we have this zero. So that's going to be this slot right here and after that it's going to say seconds. So we'll say player variable the event player is going to be us. So we're going to say player variable of the player variable so that we can get our target. So our targets T is what we're showing. All right, and we're going to put this in the top. We have it in yellow. Uh, let's put it like at the bottom of the list. So we'll put it number 10. That way we can put like all sorts of other stuff above it. Um, and yeah, we'll leave these ones white. There we go. Now we'll define this text in a variable set player variable and we'll set that to E and we'll be less text uh, D. Alright, there we go. So we created the text. Now we need to delete the text. So let's go ahead and destroy text. A text player variable E. And we'll set that player variable E to null. Now the reason that we're setting it back down to null is we want it to be like it doesn't exist. So that way we can run this again, this HUD text again. Something else that we want to do for this HUD text is we want to make sure that player variable uh, is uh, exists before we go ahead and we start trying to do this stuff. So let's go ahead and do that here by is dead. Instead of closest player to, we'll do the player variable P because that's going to be our target that we define in that function up there or in that rule up there. Event player, so we'll do player variable. We'll do, we'll do position of uh, player variable P. And it's still within the radius. So it's the same thing, it's just that we're, we're defining that the target uh, still exists that way. All right. So now that works, uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll test it in game and make sure that everything's good to go. So let's check what we did wrong. So lower time within the circle, set player variable event player P, close to player to the event player team of the event player. So that's the person that we saw, so that's why we saw the Roadhog symbol and we saw that we were resurrecting him. All right, play the effect, wait one, blah, blah, blah. 
Ah, so that's what it was. So we were modifying our own T, which is the wrong thing to do. What we want to do is we want to fi we want to modify our player variable, our target's T. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. So now our target, we're going to subtract his T by one. So now we'll go ahead and retry again. We'll make sure that it works. I see. Stops resurrecting or out in the circle. There you go, he resurrected. Get the message, get the effect. There you go, that's the tutorial. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. I'll post the code as well as the previous video. Thanks for watching.